Hello again. In this video and the upcoming videos, I'll try to explain to you what is RDF Schema and about a little bit about OWL, the web ontology uh, language. Now, these will be three, four, or maybe five videos. I'll try to keep them short so you don't get bored. But hopefully, if you understand what exactly these things are, what an RDF Schema is, and what OWL does, and why it's there, and why it makes sense, hopefully this will help you even you know understand semantic web and understand IDF even better and even more now you must have heard me mention the word vocabulary before you must have read it in the book now what exactly is a vocabulary well in the semantic web um, a vocabulary is a set of terms stored using a standard format that people can reuse so basically a vocabulary is just a set of terms is stored and saved somewhere so people can use it again and again usually um, a vocabulary of property names so usually these are like property names they are put together they have their own namespace and they are made available so they will have they will be put together in a file usually in RDF format of course and they will have their own namespace um, so people can actually use them so people can actually make use of them with sort of other sets of data yes so remember the namespace we used before the prefix the URIs and stuff that it will have its own URI so people can actually use it now of course we can use existing vocabularies of properties so these are made available as we said before and they have their own namespaces and URIs but where do we find them and what do they, what do they look like where do we find them? We need to try to find them, search for them, ask uh, experts where we can find existing vocabularies. I believe there is actually uh, a, a website that lists all the available vocabularies. I'm not sure what it is, but I believe it is there. So maybe you can search around and maybe ask, ask someone who has more experience. But usually vocabularies are stored using RDF schema and OWL standards, yes? and these are nothing but triples so even the RDF schema itself is a group or a set of triples and OWL ontologies are usually uh, sets of triples so as we can run Sparkle queries for example against uh, RDF data against for example a, a, a turtle file or against you know RDF data in general we can run RDF uh, I'm sorry Sparkle queries against RDF schemas and against OWL ontologies because they are themselves groups and sets of triples uh, so the RDF schema is actually RDF vocabulary description language RDF schema so imagine it's actually a description language for vocabularies yes I hope that makes sense so RDF schema is a description language for vocabularies yeah they describe vocabularies now it gives people a way to describe vocabularies as you can see so now what happens is we describe these vocabularies with RDF again using RDF using the ideas of triples now because they describe vocabularies so we have data about data our vocabulary is a data yes it's a set of terms and then we describe that vocabulary or we describe that data so we have data about data ie metadata so RDF schema is usually metadata and this metadata is usually available for our access or it can be accessible using Sparkle as we can access data itself as we can access RDF data turtle format and turtle files and other formats hope that I hope that makes sense so it's actually data about data it's a data about vocabulary so that's why it's called metadata now we have for example a very famous one called Dublin core uh, it's a standard uh, I'm sorry, standard set of basic met metadata terms. So, the Dublin Core we usually use it as a, 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 a in our in our. You must have seen it, by the way, in, in one of our turtle file, one of the turtle files provided by the book. Uh, we use the DC prefix for DC for Dublin Core. It is actually a, a standard set of basic meta metadata terms. So, we, in there we can find some metadata terms that we can use to describe our own uh, 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 sort of uh, vocabularies yes now Dublin core is actually is you know, this not is this not the Dublin in Ireland by the way this Dublin somewhere in the United States let's have an example or let's have a look at some examples uh, in this video we'll have one example only which is 
this file here from from the you know the examples provided by the book let me just remind you of the book so this is the book we're using you can go to sample code and you will find loads of uh, example files the one we're using is exo41 which is this one here I'm sorry not, not, not 41 I think it's 42 rather than 41 I think it's 42 rather than 41 yes it's 42 so that should be 42 not 41 yes now what it does as I said it's actually it provides a, a set of basic metadata terms terms that we can use to describe our data yes now what we're going to do is have a look at the file and the file it contains some triples from the RDF schema vocabulary description of the Dublin core so we're going to have a, a look at some triples from the RDF schema vocabulary description of the Dublin core so we have now a schema about the Dublin core itself uh, but yes hope that makes sense about the Dublin core itself enough talking I have the file open here it's actually 42 as I said not 41 that should be 42 not 41 if you have a look here of course that's a comment and we have a prefix DC the, the usual way with the colon and the, the angle brackets and the dot another another prefix RDF another prefix RDFS for our RDF schema now we're trying to describe the property creator now this creator here is part of the Dublin core set yes or set of meta or of terms about metadata it can be used for example to uh, uh, for example indicate who is the creator of a book who is the author maybe the creator of a book uh, or who is the creator of um, a film a movie a recording so you can use it for example to uh, describe me as the creator of this video for example yes and now because it's a triple so we have a property called type it's coming from RDF from from this uh, uh, um, uh, URI and it's of type property so what we're saying here or what it is saying here is actually creator has a property called type and the value is actually a property so this is actually a property in fact property is a class so we're saying here that creator is uh, some sort of um, a, a class or has a type of class property this one here the a the small case a it can be used even in our sparkle queries is the same thing as RDF type same thing as RDF colon type but we can use just we can say a just to you know in plain English we can say DC creator is a property is RDF property and remember the, the property is actually a class in the RDF here and then from RDFS now because remember RDFS, what it, uh, the RDF schema now if we go back to the definition it's actually a description language yes so we in there we have the label which we used before for example to um, uh, uh, just add some label one or more labels you know and then we tag it with the English tag with the um, language tag and then we specify the US English and then we have another property called comment if you want to add a, a simple comment you say just an entity primarily responsible for making the resource da, 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 and then you can add the, the English language tag as we did before and then he's using the author of the book is using the short format which is uh, you know where we don't have to repeat the subject we only repeat the predicate and the object values yes so remember RDFS this the comment uh, property is from RDFS from the RDF schema labels is from RDF schema and creator is from the Dublin core uh, set of of uh, meta metadata terms and here we are having a sort of description of the property creator itself from the Dublin core I'm going to stop here I know this can be a little confusing so that's why I'm going to stop here the just to make the videos uh, as short as possible and I'll see you next time